Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now this is a video that continues in the series of the RAV4 Saga um, where I've pulled the engine apart, we've done all the cylinder head checks and now um, the last video we extracted the block and the transmission and all sorts from the vehicle as well so that we can then do all the inspections on the, the engine block. And the first one that I'm going to do, which is covered on this video, is to check the block for warpage. So, to do that, you're going to need the trusty straight edge. Okay, now we've covered this before on the cylinder head, so you should know how to use it now. And uh, you're also going to need a set of, oh, there we go, a set of feeler gauges. Now, obviously, the other thing that you need are manufacturer's specs. You need to know what the specification is, what the tolerance is, what's uh, essentially a pass and what's a fail. Okay, here we go. Now, just before we actually measure the head, I have a little trick for you, a little tip. Um, Often is the case you have to remove what we call engine dowels, locating dowels. Um, and these can be either solid ones or they can have a hole in the middle where a bolt goes through. In this case, a head bolt. Now, these are either going to end up being stuck in the head when you pull the head off or they're going to be stuck in the block. And ideally you want to have them out when you're doing the, the warpage check. And for years it sort of bugged me on when you try to take them out, you'd always crush them and damage them and either give up and leave them in. Well, I came up with a bit of a plan uh, recently on getting these out. And what you need to do is find something that is a really, really snug fit to the inside diameter of that dowel. Now, it just so happens that today on this particular job, a 7mm socket will actually tap into... Bye, Ben! Um, will actually tap into the dowel and then it gives you something to, to grip the dowel with. You can put some mole grips around that or something to grip hold of the dowel and twist it because without any centre support all you're going to do is crush it. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is uh, the remaining dowel on that RAV4 block and I want to get it out of the way because I want to run the straight edge across where that is. So you just pop your socket on there and make sure that you've, might, you've got your, your verniers out there and you've, you've made sure that this is going to be a snug fit and not too tight. Otherwise you're going to splay this and it's going to be a bit of a problem. And just, just tap it into place. Don't go too far down because you need some space for the mole grips. Pull out your extension bar. Golly, I hope this works. It usually does. And then just get your mole grips or vice grips and clip those on and all you're doing is, oh there we go, look, just give it a little twist and as you're turning it, put some force to bring it up and it'll come out of the block, there you go okay, well easy as that, and um, yes, okay, it's got a few gouge marks in it and stuff but it is still essentially round and of course we can still use that, I'm sure so there you go, using something, and I used a socket, but I originally planned to use an old drill bit, but um, didn't have one the right size, I needed a 10.5 and I think they've all disappeared. Um, but yes, operation successful, removed the dowel from the engine block, and the dowel is now still usable, which is really good because you can bet your bottom dollar that if I had to replace those, or the new ones, they'd be sat on a shelf in Japan and would take two weeks to get here. Yeah, which is a bit of a problem, delays things. So yeah, it's a good idea to try and remove these intact. And I mean, some of them, th these are solid dowels. Some of them, like on the Yamahas, often have a little split down them. So they're a bit more springy and they come out a lot easier. But this one was a bit of a bummer. Okay. Oh, poor socket. Okay, so I've just spent the last sort of 15 minutes or so just cleaning off all the old gasket, the old head gasket cleaning out the tops of uh, the coolant um, chambers, the, the, the coolant orifices uh, that transfer coolant up to the head. And all I used 
was a scraper uh, initially and then some P800 wet and dry with a bit of light oil on there just to just to get rid of all the marks and deviations and bits and pieces and I did that once I removed those two dowels so now we're in a position where we can actually use the straight edge and uh, take some warpage readings here we go mm. okay so just with, as with the head make sure you've got your straight edge and you use the machined side that's really important and we're going to take measurements on diagonal, diagonal, and we'll do one across the middle, do one there, we'll do one there, and then we'll do all of these. Basically, we want to make sure that that, uh, that machine surface is still um, flat, essentially, within spec. So we'll start with that one. And the specification for this Toyota engine uh, for the round four is maximum they call it maximum deck warpage they call this the deck does mr toyota and it's 0 0.05 millimeters and i've got that here on a on a feeler gauge okay so all you do basically is just run along seeing if the feeler gauge will go underneath oh, pretty close will go underneath the actual uh oh Okay, so we've got a fail on that one there, look. And a fail there. Okay, let's just move it off that way that dowel goes. And just see if that changes things a little bit. Now, nah, still a fail. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark up the points that are fail. So we'll put a mark just there and a mark there. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Right, that's all good. Let's just try it from the other side. Yep, fail again, fail. Fail. Oh, that's just in, I would say. It. Oh, there we go. So we've got some fail there. Again there and there. Oh, it's not looking good, is it? Okay, so we'll put a mark there. We'll put another mark in that area. Okay, across the end now. And don't forget the head was a pass. So, it's not good. Okay, that's all good. And when you're putting this on, try and put it in a position where you've got maximum metal. You don't really want to be putting it over where all the coolant chambers are because you've got a lot less to, um, you know, surface area to check, a lot less positions that you can check there. Yeah, another fail. Okay. Let's just mark that. Now that was there, wasn't it? I think. Was it there? There we are. Okay, so we've got another fail. Another fail there. Poor engine. Okay. So we need to do one on this side now, going across. And always make sure that everything's very cleanly doing this because any kind of dirt and grime on your feeler gauge or on the straight edge is, uh, is going to prevent your feeler gauge getting through when it maybe should get through, you know. Let me give you a false reading again. Okay, well that's a pass. Right. So we'll just go crossways now. No, that's all good. Okay. 
Cool. And then just doing the last one. What have we got? No, yeah, that one's all right. Okay. So, unfortunately, we've got what one, two, three, four, five positions where the the top of the block, um, you know, is lower than what it should be. There's more. There's clearance, and there shouldn't be. It should be dead flat. Now, that's probably most likely the fact um, that the engines get overheated at some point, and things do warp when they get too hot. So this head, uh, sorry, this block is going to need. To be skimmed uh, and flattened down again so it's nice and flat and within spec yeah fail number one 15 more uh, 14 more checks to go okay so the specification was 0 0.05 millimeters of warpage and in five positions it was a fail damn okay well that is how you check a uh, an engine block for warpage and don't forget you do need a straight edge you can't just use a flat bit of metal or a ruler or something because it has to be dead flat and this has been machined dead flat so you need one simple and of course no doubt you'll have a set of feeler games okay well that's the end of that particular check there's going to be lots more coming up later on um, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, then do leave them down the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then do, please do, because more the merrier, it really helps. Uh, and it, it's what gives me the incentive to carry on doing these videos for you. Um, but do remember, click on the little gear icon next to the subscribe one as well, and turn on your notifications, and that way you'll get a notification when any, whenever any new videos get uploaded. And there's usually five, sometimes ten each week, so it's pretty busy at the moment. Okay, crew, well, uh, thanks for watching. You've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Cheers, over and out.